Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt Wiles and I'm here in my home studio today to get thrilled about bass gear. So the bass we can get thrilled about today is a uh, Guild Starfire reissue. I believe this one's a 2017. It's, uh, it's new to me. Um, and it really is my first impression is this is such a wonderful bass. Um, first of all, mine's an emerald green. Um, I've become a fan of green basses lately and I absolutely love the finish. Um, the, it's kind of hard to see in the light sometimes because of the uh, the the, car, the curvature of the body, but really the uh, the emerald green finish on this base is practically flawless. Has really nice uh, cream binding, which is a nice touch. So it just oozes old school vibe all the way. Uh, this base is made in Korea. It's part of the Guild uh, Newark Street collection. Uh, not to be confused with the uh, the reissues they did, I believe, in the late '90s. I think they made some American, uh, some USA made. Guild Starfire reissues that people like Justin Melville Johnson have played. Um, anyway, a few things about this instrument before we play. Uh, it has all of the appointments of the originals, all the original 60s uh, two pickup basses, minus the, the tug bar thumb rest things. Um, you know, some people are into those, some people aren't. But overall, uh, I remember being a teenager and reading through like Bass Player Magazine and stuff and seeing guys like Justin Meldel Johnson, you know, playing Starfires and getting all these like incredibly cool, quirky, you know, plunky sounds out of these like short scale basses with flat wounds on them with a pick and fuzz and all this. And uh, so I've wanted one for the better part of 15 years and was really excited when I had an opportunity to score this one for a pretty good deal off of, I think, a shop in New Jersey. And initially, basses like this, I'm kind of nervous about reissues because these basses, even when they were new, you know, back in the late 60s, basses like this weren't really known for being particularly nice or particularly great especially compared to how well, you know, Fenders or Gibsons can sometimes play. Um, the Guild Starfires or Hollow Bodies, short-scale basses of that era, they had plenty of character and plenty of vibe, but oftentimes they had intonation issues, they had goofy playability things, uh, some of them had these really, really tiny necks that were almost too small to play, uh, neck dive issues, body shape things, you know, lots of, lots of cool sounding basses, lots of cool looking basses, but a lot of basses that weren't really fun to play. Uh, so I'm always nervous that when, you know, something that was already kind of quirky to begin with, when they come out with the affordable model, I'm always kind of nervous that it's really not going to be that great. And I have to say, I cannot say enough, uh, I cannot say enough positive things about this reissue Starfire. The construction is great. The fretwork is flawless. The finish is practically flawless uh, from what I've seen. I believe I have a few little marks. Um, this was a B stock unit, so I think I, I think there's a few demo marks on this one. But other than that, everything is outstanding. This is one of the only bases in my, in my collection that has not been modified. Uh, I'm usually, except for a few things, I'm usually the first person to throw in, you know, a set of nice pickups, maybe some hardware. Again, this is one of the only instruments, especially in this price range, that I'm actually satisfied leaving as is. Uh, these Bisonics sound wonderful. Now, I've never been able to compare them to like the real ones, but I do have to say these sound great. They have adjustable pole pieces, which is perfect for balancing string to string or from pickup to pickup. Really, really great feature. Um, and they just they put out like a nice full signal, a big sound. They really do sound wonderful. Um, again, the fretwork is flawless. Everything plays great. The bass sets up very comfortably. You know, if you like a low setup, this bass will do a very, you know, very low, clean setup. Uh, some people like to crank it up, you know, for more volume or something. But so the setup capability is really great. It has this original uh, guild style bridge. Even with like the, uh, some of the limited uh, flexibility of the bridge, the bass still sets up beautifully. It just has two set screws to adjust the overall height of the bridge. And the saddles are actually movable. So you can tweak the intonation. Um, I will say the intonation on this one is pretty good. Uh, Guild Starfires or basses like this were never really known for having wonderful intonation. So the fact that you can make some fine adjustments string to string, I think is a, is a, is a plus. Um, it goes a touch sharp on the first string up in this area. But again, we're bass players and when you're playing a Starfire, you're not, you're not looking to play dense chords in the upper register. You know, we're going, we're going for vibe, we're going for a sound. So having it a little out of tune up here is really not a deal breaker. Uh, looks like I believe it has rosewood saddles, it has wooden saddles like the original. Really cool touch. 
And I think it really greatly impacts the woodiness of the sound and how warm and organic this bass sounds. So uh, Grover, clover-shaped tuners, really rugged, really great, really smooth. Hold every they hold everything in place. Really nice. Uh, electronics, it's like a like a Gretsch, I think, kind of deal, where you have volume and tone for each pickup. But you have a master up here, which I think is a great touch. If you have a blend that you like to set, you can kill it with one knob. Also, you have the option of a pickup selector if you want to make fast changes. Um, so really intuitive, great flexible control layout. Uh, the, the bass doesn't weigh very much, even for having a big block of wood down the middle. It balances in the lap beautifully. Uh, you'll get a little neck dive on the strap, but you can't really avoid that given that your strap pin is here. Anyone who's ever played like a 335 shaped instrument or something like this knows that there's really no way around that. Uh, but regardless, sitting in the lap for being as big as it is, um, I'm kind of a tall guy, but I find it to be pretty comfortable. I like how it sits. Uh, the scale is, I think, 30.7 inches, so a little shy of 31. It puts everything right here in front of me. Everything is nice and compact, really comfortable to play. Uh, guitar players, if you're looking for a bass to play on, short scales like this are so friendly because I know you guys are used to much smaller necks than some of us are. So again, I can't, I can't say enough about how fun it is to play because of the size. Also, for being a relatively budget or affordable instrument, uh, especially a short scale, the E string is really responsive and really resonant. I've played short scales in the past where the E string sounded great and the output was great compared to the other strings, but the, the bass itself didn't seem to just light up when I'd play the E. And this bass, I love it. I can feel it in my gut here with the bass against me. Whenever I play this E, as well as all the other notes on the fingerboard, I can feel the bass come alive. And to me, that's become a deal breaker. So regardless if your bass is $200 or $2,000, if it doesn't resonate with the open strings and all the notes, you know, you might not have as much fun as you really could. So you know, nothing to fear with this short scale, huge sound. It's awesome. I'm going to get into some of the sounds you can make.